everyone this is ben back with you in the midwest model shop first off i apologize i'm getting over a really bad head cold that afflicted me at the towards the end of filming this whole thing but that's why my voice is a little off in today's episode we're going to go ahead and finish planking up the duchess of kingston uh, we've reached the point where i suggested in the last video uh, with bending the boards at the stern and now we're going to go ahead and transition down to uh, basically whole pieces as we move down and finish up the hull. Uh, ends up looking really nice. Got to do some little calculating. Um, I thought we were going to have to end up building, a, making a bunch of stakes, strakes, strakes, a couple of joints basically, uh, and fairing some pieces of wood together to make it work right. But it ended up not being too bad. Um, it didn't end up as nice as I would have liked, but it turned out really well and ultimately it doesn't matter it's all going to be covered up anyway so um, this concludes like i think possibly the slower part of the build for me it's kind of boring like it's super important right that you get all of this right because it affects the shape of the ship um, but it's it's really repetitive so i'm hoping from here on out we can really get on with fitting out the ship and things will happen fast again so uh yeah with that being said, thank you very much for watching and subscribing. Let's get into the build. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, back in action. So we've gotten to the point that I suggested uh, working to in the last video, and that was uh, working your way down until the frames have basically, or I'm sorry, your timbers basically got to the point where you're just going to be running flush uh, into our um, stern post back here. And there's a little filler you got to put in there, but basically this is all of our stuff. It worked out mostly okay for me. Um, as you can see, let's see here, this side turned out a little bit better. On this side, I ended up having to put in that tiny little filler piece. None of this is sanded or cleaned up yet, uh, but a little bummed about the filler piece, but from back here, you just can't tell. Uh, if we look at the lines here, this is working out pretty well. Comes down nice and easy. Nice curve. Comes back up. There's a little bit of a dip in there, but that's okay. It's not, it didn't turn out quite as nice here. I guess actually it's pretty good here on port side. Okay, so as we press along here, uh, there's a couple of things that you can do. Um, you could just continue on down and one of the things I did is I started in the middle here and calculated how many more planks would I need to finish uh, doing this and it's, it worked out to 10 per side and a semi sort of common thing to do is go ahead and at this point fix your bottom plank in a position start here and then this will allow you to start working your way back up. And the reason for doing this is that you'll end up with a funny shaped plank somewhere in the middle. So you'll end up making one uh, custom piece. It's worth checking this out ahead of time because if that plank is wider than the boards you have available, and that's something I'm worried about because these are only about four mil wide, uh, you're gonna have to do something. If it's narrower, it's not a big deal. So I thought, well, okay, I'll, I'll put this top plank in and then I'll drop in this piece right here and we'll just go ahead and you know start filling in. The problem is when I did that, we end up, even if you start at the bottom working your way up, see right here my line, you end up with a sliver that doesn't get filled. So, and I calculated this on both sides. Here's my other one. Uh, in the back, I noted though that we'll be perfectly fine. We actually probably won't need any steelers at all, which I was really surprised about. But we are running into a gap issue uh, in the middle of the ship will end up a little bit short. But what I did figure out was that if I started planking and continued planking all the way down with full planks from the top down, that my smaller board ends up being in the bottom in, in the, uh, where it butts into the keel. So my next step, since I've already made these piece, this piece right here and it's locked into the rabbit and ready to go. My next step is going to be figuring out how much of this board do I need to take away so that I can continue to plank on down and up if I want to uh, with full pieces. 
and then we'll just go ahead and finish up. Back here, things are getting a little bit easier because now instead of doing this crazy curve action, we're just gonna butt into the stem, or stern post, sorry, and it works out real nicely. All right, so uh, this piece is a little bit complicated. It's, it's nice and flat and then has a real serious twist to it and then rolls down into the rabbit here and then you've got to very carefully fashion and curve your um, point here where it terminates into the stem up here in the front like so. It's a fun piece. It's really satisfying when you're done. It's really not too hard to create because there's lots of clamping space and room to put your fingers and anchor points and things like that. Alright, so uh, let me go ahead and figure out what I'm going to do here for this size and we'll get back to you and then uh, yeah we'll press on. All right, uh, much time has passed since that last clip. Um, and what have I decided to do? I have decided to continue on down. Uh, I went ahead and as you can see here, they've got this big uh, line here. It says nine. And there's another one right there on the other side, equidistance apart from the bottom. Somehow, I figured out that if I just continued down with full size pieces all the way down, I will end up with a full size plank at the bottom. And that's going to be the one that uh, I've already made. Sorry, right here. That should be the fit. What I was doing before was I was shoving this piece way down into the rabbit joint. And there's actually a recess and it can go down in. But it also has room to float up a little bit and be flush. And that will end up ultimately tying everything together really nicely. So all that talk I'd done before basically it has worked out where these full width pieces continuing all the way down. Nothing's being tapered in the stern. It's just being tapered in the near the bow. Uh, should work out. Uh, as we move along down here on the bow, you may have noticed that these pieces start to get just a little bit thicker. There's a little more room right there. Um, and that's fine. They're going to start to get bigger as we move down. So what I wanted to do now now we'll flip this over what is basically as this piece is flat it rotates around it curves and then it curves back and tapers up to the bow here again there's a lot going on and so what i thought i would do is show um what you end up with and what i'm doing for my process here so this is let's see this is the port side so i've already gone about uh creating my board just like I've shown in the previous videos. It's already tapered. There's a bevel on here. It's cut. It's basically ready to go, but it's, it's wet. It's not shaped right. So what I've been doing is taking these, letting them soak, and then pushing them down into position, and then taking my iron here, using my fingers, and drying it. Because what happens is, if we do this for the whole piece, so I'm going to end up soaking the back too, uh, you'll end up with a really cool curved piece of wood that already wants to hold the shape of the bottom of the ship here, and that makes gluing it together a lot easier. So I'm going to continue heating this up and letting it dry, and then I'm going to soak the back, and we'll do the same thing. I'll come back to you here with that uh, knocked out. Okay, so the front uh, has been dried and shaped mostly, and I've let the back soak. Again, there's, there's no glue on this. We're just going to kind of preform it, right? So we'll lock it in the back, put a little clamp on it to help hold the shape. And then I like to go right in here uh, and just kind of force the issue here. This is the curve we're eventually going to want to take. And just stick my iron right on there. I'm using the, the curved part of the iron on the face to encourage, see how it's dry right, right there? I want to encourage the whole board to flex to fit the shape behind it. Also, always pushing down to try and keep the board flush up against the next one. Can't get too close to the back here because I'll melt the tip of my little clamp, but we can get as warm as we can. And then just work our way back up here and continue to heat this thing up. And what 
I kind of like about this is I'm not waiting overnight for the thing to dry to find out if it shrank to be way too small or something silly like that. All right, so we'll just keep going on like that till the board's all set up. Okay, and when you're done, you end up with this really unique board that's got a big twist in the back, comes around, curves back to the front, and then, uh, you know, it drops into place naturally, real nice, fits very well, out of any trouble, and uh, it's easy to glue into position. So I just wanted to demonstrate that, yes, the boards are going to start to curve and get a little crazy uh, towards the end here. I've got my... Uh, board on the starboard side already setting up. I'll glue that in and we'll continue on to the point where we can just uh, hopefully wrap this up here. I'm ready to move on to the next stage. Pressing on. Okay, uh, we're back where something relevant's finally happened. We're getting very close to being complete. But I noticed back here we're basically like two, three planks away and then we've got a significantly larger gap up front which is prompting a course of action. Um, I guess these could have been just a little bit thicker. Have, had I taken the time, uh, Ogla, is, she, her channel is amazing, she actually calculates, if I had taken the time and calculated like her how wide these actually needed to be, I could have probably gotten a lot closer but since this is all going to get painted white, ultimately in the end it doesn't really matter. It's just an exercise at this point in making things work. So, what I'm going to do is stop planking down for a moment here. And I'm going to go ahead and take my uh, previously created, let's see, this is it, bottom keel pieces here that go all the way down. And I'm going to glue them into position. And that will leave me with the actual space left and then right up here you see they get things get wider so what we'll have to do is create steelers now I screwed up and broke a piece early on let's see here right there and you can see I created a steeler to connect it and see how it comes down goes across diagonally and down that is actually how these joints were made how you would overlap uh, the wood and so we want to create that down here so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and I'll glue these in and then what I'm gonna do next is take a couple of pieces and run them in here till we get probably to about this part up on the bow here or uh, forward on the stem so that you could start fitting wide pieces again uh, and also I have to figure out either I continue kind of the same width plank up here on the bow or I'm going to have to start getting significantly wider. As you can see, you know, this piece is, is pretty wide at the bottom. Um, I could do that again and then go back to narrow. Just got to figure this out. On one, if you're just doing this, you could just fill these in, right? You're going to sand it smooth and it's all going to get painted white. You're not going to see it, but I'm, I'm trying to make it all, you know, work and transition right for those who care as practice for ships down the road. All right, so let me glue those on and then we'll come back with how we're gonna piece this together. Okay, so here's where we have arrived. Uh, the bottom piece is in, and then I went ahead and basically split two boards and custom fit them to one another to, to fill this gap. And then most importantly, Right in here, we've gotten to the point where we can split it again. So here's my scarf joint. This is the next plank. It's a full-size plank. You can see we'll go in like this. And I'm going to have to cut a smaller board plank down underneath to fill the gap in. But we're getting to the point now where we have the space for two whole planks to fill this up and finish it up. I just got to size them right up here in the front, I hope. I don't run in trouble there. Uh, this next one, I am going to have to have one more that comes out and probably split somewhere down in here. Uh, there'll be another odd filler piece. But yeah, and that's, that's kind of the shape. So you don't have to do this again, but this is kind of the quote unquote correct way of scarfing a joint together if you want to know how to do that. And it was, it'd be more common to see this joint somewhere back in here. I, I probably could have, you know, if I'd have planned this out better. The, the issue is 
I'm limited to the width of my boards. They're only like four mil and you need like five and six mil boards to do whole pieces here. So I guess if I really, really cared and I really wanted to get this correct, I'd go get more pear wood uh, and mill it to the right thickness and have some you know wider planks to play with. But you know, it's fine, right? So uh, we'll go ahead and scarf that joint in. This one's gonna run all the way to the bow and fit up in the front here. Uh, and then we'll we'll work on filling this gap. So I'll go ahead and uh, get that knocked out. Press it on. Okay, here's where we are at. Uh, I went ahead and made a couple of scarf joints right here. And they're way too close together probably for real life, but it was the best I could do. And so, yeah. Uh, now what we have is one last piece and I went ahead and cut it out. It's got our little angle on it and the part in the front and let's see with any luck here uh, it will fit the way that we want to like so. And now all we have to do uh, is let it dry and I'm still gonna cheat here and use my soldering iron to apply a little heat and that will cause certain spots to set up. We'll get that back end pushed down. And uh, we'll be set and ready to go. The next thing to do is going to be to sand this down and fill in all the little cracks. But I am very pleased. And you see that glue bubbled out of there? It'll bubble out as the soldering iron sets up. I'm very pleased with how this all worked out here um yeah i haven't like i said i haven't built one of these ships in probably 10 years no more than 10 years probably 15 years i don't even remember all right so there she is all planked up a little dark gap there but otherwise we are good to go. If I put, tip the camera up here a little bit, you can see from the front. It's pretty even. Out any uh, weird abnormalities in the shapes, so it's, it's, it's pretty consistent. Should sand down nice and smooth uh, and turn out, I, th I think it's turned out really, really well. So, yeah that's it so uh next set of business i gotta take another big break here um, for work but we'll come back and sand all this we'll get it all nice and smooth and then we'll talk about that and fill some of this in and then we'll we'll wrap up the video all right press it on okay i'm back uh from my work stuff and i have a summertime cold so i apologize for the way i sound so we're going to move on to sanding uh sanding do whatever you want to do. Uh, use a sanding block. I use sanding blocks, sanding paper, uh, scrapers. Basically, the bottom line is you just want to get the profile nice and smooth and even. You don't want any dents and you don't want any high spots. Some people go ahead and they just use wood filler, slather it on all over this and sand it all down. Do whatever you want to do. Um, ultimately, I'll end up doing 120 grit sandpaper, 220, and then a 320. I'm going to stop there. But what I want to talk about is the little gaps that we got to fill in. Uh, you can do this any old way that you want to. Uh, but I like to just use a little bit of CA glue. So we'll pick like this, this crack right here. Just pile some on. Lick my finger so it doesn't stick to it. Smooth it out. And then this is uh, 220 sandpaper. And while it's still kind of wet, creates some sawdust that falls into the crack with the CA glue. So at least it's sort of the same color, right? And you can take some of the sawdust and smush it in there. There you go, it fills in the gap that you had. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sand up this whole thing and we'll come back and we'll look at the whole model uh, all wrapped up and uh, ready to move on to the next thing. All right, press it on. 
Okay, here we are back in action. The ship is sanded up. The hull, I think, looks fantastic. Uh, I've blown all the sawdust off and everything, so it's it's perfectly clean as far as it can go right now. Um, super happy with the shape and the profile. Um, yeah, looks really, really nice. Some of the detail in the back here didn't turn out as well as I wanted at the stern, but that's okay. Um, you know, the woods, the hull bend and everything looks nice. Uh, if we sight down it, it's pretty uniform all the way up to the front. Um, so yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm happy. So what we have to do now uh, is look at the instructions because I don't exactly remember. It's been so long, but I'm pretty sure uh, we've got a few. The whale has to be installed. I think that's what it's called. There might be a couple of them on here. Um, and then once that's done in the next episode, we'll do that. I'm going to mark off the water line and almost all of this just gets painted white. And that's okay. That's going to look really sharp and nice. Uh, and then I think it's going to fast forward at that point. I think we're going to be... Uh, I think the ship's going to go back to being assembled really quickly because a lot of the pieces are just kind of big and make a big impact. This really kind of slowed the whole process down, but now that I'm finished with it, I mean, it's just, it's super satisfying uh, the way that this all turned out. We've got some little gaps here that I haven't filled yet. Um, I'm kind of going to wait on that and see what happens here. Um, but yeah, this is, this is looking... I, I think outstanding. Um, I've enjoyed this process so far. So anyway, uh, that's it. That's how you get the hull planked up. I hope that was helpful and informative. And uh, next time we'll get into, I think, yeah, pressing on with all this other stuff. I think we're going to remove all these fittings up here. These are all temporary. We'll start working inboard, get more of the decking in. Um, yeah, and moving along. We've we got to fit her all out. All right. Take care. Hope everybody's being safe.